365, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you watch this video, and welcome to another 365 Trading Academy video around trading. So today, as you kind of like have seen in the title, I want to do a quick, uh, 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 you know, sufficient, well-rounded deep dive into just Euro USD CTO data and the pairing, and I'll explain the reason why. But before I go too far, shake my hand one more time, shake my hand in the comment section if you want, don't forget to like the video, um, and let's get to it, guys. So um, just to give you guys some context, I'm in South Africa, right? That's kind of like where I'm based, um, you know, as an academy, as a human being, my family, etc. And South Africa right now is going to what's called national load shedding. So basically, the government switches of power across the country to kind of like help stabilize the grid, basic corruption stuff, they, you know, whatever. So there's no electricity for about two hours a day on different times. So maybe about three power cuts in a day. We have a generator, but we can't use it because my little girl hates the sound of the generator. She cries, so it's, it's useless. So since load shedding, uh, when, it power, when, when power outages happens, I normally go to the golf course and try and do about nine holes and I come back. And I bumped into someone who says they watch the videos and they, they design their own COT spreadsheet. That's why I wanna, that's kind of like where this whole video came from. And we're looking at the COT data, right? And, and, and what they believe it was telling them and they thought this is what they need to do, right, for their trading. And we, as we started to speak, and I actually had a good game, by the way, as we started to speak around his way, his interpretation of the data, his interpretation of my videos, and his interpretation of the charts, I thought, geez, I need to kind of like quickly come back and clarify a couple of things in case a lot of people still are not reading this thing properly. Now, again, COT data reading or institutional inflow readings is a big part of my module three. So a lot of people don't know this because they haven't had access to it yet, right? If you don't forget, just check out the links down below. If you want to take the course, you've got about nine days left, at least from the, from the day I'm filming this video, right? Nine days left before the 75% offer expires, right? We spent the whole month of April celebrating another anniversary as an academy. And for that, we gave out 75% off for the full course. But let's just quickly have a deep dive into... Uh, you know, a deeper dive rather. And if you remember, if you want to watch the full video of, of, of how to design or how I design my master trigger spreadsheet, which is something that all students get access to, right? So if you're a student in the academy, this is always updated by me for you, right? You already have this, right? But just watch this video above somewhere up here. There's a video mastering uh, a trader's master spreadsheet, so something like that. Just, just click, right click, and then watch this bit, that video after this. But real quick, let's kind of like unpack what COT does when it comes out, why it comes out, and how to correctly read the data, because that's actually quite crucial, right? So uh, I promise this won't take time, won't be like my longer videos, but I do miss doing stuff like this. Please comment down below and tell me this is the kind of content you want. I mean, I, I was so sad when I realized that a lot of the stuff we now do on the channel is just signals, right? And I don't mind that. It's a promise I made. I said 365 would never sell Forex, you know, trading signals. We would do them for free. We call that our, our weekly war room. So every Sunday at 4.30 p.m. SAT time, we've got, you know, these weekly analysis of where I'm buying and selling. And if you follow them for the last four or five weeks, we've been insanely accurate you know we might have a group of orders that have not yet been triggered but the orders that get triggered have been extremely accurate one or two losses i'm talking in a duration of about four to five weeks that's absolutely rare in forex so we've been at we've run a very good role right and that's all for free but what i want the channel to do and what i always wanted the channel to do is to fill in the gaps signals are not everything if i get tired get sick get bored you know you know get busy right and i stop doing the signals then i don't want the channel to become useless to you so we need to also make time for this, this type of you know comprehensive uh, uh, content where there's a lot of learning and empowering right so that's why i think this video is very important today and if you feel that way please do leave me a comment down below talk to me give me that feedback so that i know you know it, it, sometimes the simplest just liking the video then i know i'm on the right track right so before we start any type of euro usd on cot analysis let's just remind ourselves of a very important framework this is kind of like the affirmation that i am making everyone say out loud at least five times in my home and i'm crazy if you know me if you know me very well you know i love affirmations this is my whole traders affirmation for the year 2022 everything i put into here normally comes 
true as long as I follow the consistent steps. And as a trader, you need something like this, right? We'll bring back the podcast. We'll start to reinforce these rules around affirmation, subconscious, and your trading. It'll come up a lot in our module four for trading psychology. So again, book your seat with the link down below because when those things start to happen and the prices go up, right? At least I've done my part here. But this is important. For, for, for anyone in any walk of life, but in your trading journey, this is one of the important things you have to do. Every day and every way, I'm getting better and better. It's a, it's a one word sentence. It's for free. You, you're not paying a guru. You are literally planting into your subconscious mind. Please take this seriously, traders. Every day, in every way, as a trader, I'm getting better and better. I'm getting better and better with risk management. I'm getting better and better with equity building. I'm getting better and better with my day trading or swing trading, with building positions. I'm getting better and better with rule following. Every day, in every way, I'm getting better and better. Let me tell you something real quick. The reason why you break most of your trading rules, don't care for them. The reason why you take trades that you didn't plan and don't take the trades that you plan. The reason why you are in 10 signals groups, 15 telegram groups, 45 Facebook groups is because you have no consistency within yourself. You lack the confidence and the faith to do it yourself and you will not change. You won't just delete and exit out of those different groups that are telling you to buy and sell at the same time. It will never happen. You got into those groups as an act of habit. So what you need to do before you change the habit is you need to create a system of auto suggestion. You need to make sure your subconscious mind knows there is better, you deserve better, you can do better. And it's, it's as simple as saying every day, in every way as a trader, I'm getting better and better. Maybe you fix risk management for the next month, every day, in every way. And I'm just gonna tell you, I'm gonna read you a quick quote from, from Napoleon Hill. I love Napoleon Hill. You know, Dean of Personal Development, Napoleon Hill, L. Nightingale, the, the beautiful 1930s, the stuff that came out of the Great Depression it has, has been an incredible influence. And, and just on this quick topic here, you know, I was reading this you know, yesterday, concentration, right? And by the way, concentration means visualization, right? So, so, so for Napoleon Hill, concentration is a big part of how you visualize your mind, right? So, 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 so what, 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 I'm going to get into Euro USD, be patient. This is important for your trading. Concentration in, put whatever, in fatherhood, in salesmanship, in trading. Concentration slash visualization in trading means planting in your conscious mind a definite aim. I will have 743, 500,000 US dollars by the end of the year for my private trading account. That's my definite aim, a definite aim. Uh, idea, plan, or purpose, and the continuous focusing upon it of the conscious mind. Continually focusing on what? On your trading account? No, you need to be focusing on this way more than you are focusing on your trading account. That's the irony, right? If, if all you think, if, if you're looking at charts, but the same mind that is built to blow accounts, it doesn't matter how many trend lines you buy, how many systems you buy, how many indicators you put in. Is the problem is you've got to cleanse the mind. And then it goes on to say, it means the ability to control your attention and focus uh, and focus it on a given problem, which is the attainment of your trading goal, that's the problem, until you have solved it, until you've reached that goal. It means the ability to throw off the effects of the habits, breaking your risk management, failing to grow. If you're a day trader, not, not knowing when to get out. If you're a swing trader, getting out too early when there's still a lot of money on the table. Whatever that problem is, it means the ability to throw off the effects of habits you wish to discard. You want to stop doing that, those habits, and the power to build new habits. It, seems, it means complete self-mastery. It won't happen every night. So every day, I tell myself that in every way, as a trader, I'm getting better and better. And the louder I say that vibrational sound, speaking to my subconscious mind, my mind goes to sleep at night. When I wake up tomorrow, I start to believe it. You will start to believe it. You gotta be consistent though, guys. Right, number two, before we get into the charts, your bank account, your trading account, your investing portfolio is a reflection of your standard. It is not a reflection of the markets going against you. It's not a reflection of your broker going against you. It's not a reflection of liquidity rates. We know liquidity rates exist. That's how the business works. It is a pure reflection of your standard. You want to get rid of the current standard you have. Number one, you need to have a whole new way to look at the markets. If you're still not a 365 student, 
Once again, 75% off, check that link down below. But more importantly, even my trading strategy, believe you me, as much as I want to grow my trading academy, it is absolutely nothing without a mind that is ready to take this thing by the horns. And it can be as simple as telling yourself that every day, in every way, I'm getting better and better as a trader, right? So now let's have a look at um, uh, my COT spreadsheet. Excuse me, because I want to look at Euro USD and just keep it to one chart today, you know, as an example, as a pragmatic example, right? So to keep the video short, to keep your attention span with me, but to also, you know, hit the nail home. I'm going to be, you know, focused on this. So once again, all registered students have access to, 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 to this particular spreadsheet. Um, um, where I put in all the holistic COT data, you know, month on month, every time it comes in, and you can see it's extremely up to date right now. Um, the last time we got COT reporting was last week, Tuesday, today is the 21st, so we got another one this week, it's going to get out on Friday and, and I'll add it over the weekend, but 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 everything is in uh, right in this sense, and uh, I've only updated Euro for this video just so that you guys get a sense. Now, in the COT video that I told you guys to, you know, right click or watch after this, this video, now I spoke a lot about the power of having a 13 week average. Right. And what I've done is I've now built in a formula for students who are going to access the spreadsheet so that it can calculate for you. But I want to explain something. So don't forget, I'm playing golf. Someone comes, sees me on, on hole number two. We catch up, we talk and we play together. And he tells me that he's compiled a whole lot of information, right, on, on, on his uh, COT, the one that he's made himself. He's not yet a student. And according to COT, this is what he's seen uh, Euro is going to do. And, I, and I, I completely see the opposite. So I wanted to kind of like explain why why he's seen something different. I've explained it to him, but it might benefit you. Right. So now there are a couple of things to be mindful of when you're looking at CRT data. But let's look at Euro. Let's just look at let's look at what this thing is saying. Right. So let's quickly look at the charts kind of like build context, right? So I'm going to quickly move to the daily time frame just to give you guys a nice holistic view of Euro USD on the daily. Right, and you'll you forgive all my lines, right? So, so you, no one can deny the fact that Euro USD since the 16th of June, and maybe a little bit earlier, we saw the little bit earlier last year, 16th of June, Euro USD has been in a downtrend, right? 16th of June is all the way up there. And if you look on the DXY chart, the dollar chart, you cannot forget, if you've been with me for a long time, we had positional trades, we held them, and we closed them this year, by the way, like beautiful buy trade on the dollar as we were selling Euro USD. Unfortunately for Euro USD, I got out last year, uh, which was kind of like down moving, you know, you know, like really held as much as I could, but eventually, you know, closed somewhere here. Uh, a beautiful swing trade for a couple of months, nonetheless, right? But never actually got a perfect entry for swing for swing trading, anyways. Till then, still waiting for one right now. But the thing has been on a downtrend, right, since last year June, right? And that's because the FOMC spoke about how they were going to have to move to ending, you know, QE printing money. There was going to be tapering last year November, blah 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 blah. So the dollar got strength and the euro fell, right? That makes a lot of sense. And so this thing has been in a downtrend. I want to say this again. Euro USD has been on a downtrend since last year, June, all the way to this year. There's, there's no uptrend on the chart. I am on the daily. I can go to the weekly to get a, a much more finer view. You can see it for yourself. There's absolutely, I know there are a lot of lines, but you can see the candlesticks. Price has been falling nonstop since the 24th of May, 2021. That's the trend. Trend is your friend. You hear retail traders say this all the time. At 365, we like to say, Trend is your friend until the bend, right? If you don't know how to anticipate the bend, the trend ain't your friend, right? And, and, and that's just the truth. Now, now let's have a look now at COT, because COT kind of like registers, right? The, you know, the biggest orders, the biggest sales in the markets on the tables right now, pushing price. And if you look at COT, the way we've compiled, I think, you know, you know for, for, I started like late September, but it wouldn't make a difference because even in September, Euro USD last year was still in a downtrend. We can find the month of September here on the spread or on the chart. There's September, the 9th of September. So there, 
from the 3rd of September, Euro USD has been falling. In fact, the 3rd of September was a perfect entry. You will never, this was so beautiful, clean supply, you know, fresh touch into a trend line. Beautiful, gone, right. So on the 3rd of September, we got a second chance to join the big downfall from June, right? So, so that, that actually was the best seller's entry. And so that's where our master trader spreadsheet kind of like starts to collect data from. And since then, right and, and I, i'm going to do this with you as quickly but as carefully as possible so this is total total is both longs and shorts i like to see that i want to see how many orders they are together and i'll tell you that and then i break them down i look at the because of the total we've got 300,000 buy orders or sell orders that week. I want to know the percentage of longs in the total and the percentages of shorts so column f here is longs and then the next one is shorts. So when we go all the way down to September to kind of like look at, you know, we saw from the third that there was definitely nothing short of, where's the third of September right there? That was the beginning of a continued downward spiral up until April, 2022, right? So markets have been falling for almost nine months since then. But when you look at COT data, remember F is long, G is short. Long is bad. If you look at COT data, on the 7th of September, there was a report that there were more longs than shorts. And the following week, more longs than shorts, more longs than shorts. And it was only in October for a little while. I'll say from about uh, 5th of October up until the beginning of November, where the longs were slightly less and the shorts were slightly more, right? But then again, we had more longs than shorts. And then it kept changing, kept changing, kept changing up until I have it highlighted here how the year started. And when the year started on the 4th of January this year, 2022, we once again had a quick change where since January this year, and believe you me, look at the percentages, there was 50,7% longs and 49,3% shorts. So there were more longs than shorts throughout the whole month of January, more longs than shorts throughout the whole month of February, more longs than shorts throughout, uh, so I'm, yeah, I'm correct, more longs than shorts throughout the whole month of March. And currently as we speak, there have been more longs than shorts in the whole month of April so far. So naturally, when you see more longs than shorts, you know, it, it, the, the untrained mind, or at least at level one of COT reading, you are always anticipating a buy and naturally always getting burnt. Because even though there have been more longs than shorts, for, 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 you know, for, for, you know for, for, from as early as we can tell, markets have been going down nonetheless. Now, complete trading, by the way, requires a comp competent understanding of order flows, which we're going to do here, but a very clean, for the retail trader, when I used to be on the floor, this didn't matter. I didn't care. I had the order flow stacked in front of me. I had to call and execute. My job on the floor was not to trade. I don't know if people know this. My job was to fill orders. I always knew who was going to win in the long run based on the orders that are stacked up. But it's not the same. COT is not the same reflection of that right now. So I want to I wanna make sure we make it clear and plain today how this data interacts with clean chart work. Because as a retail trader, you have to be good at identifying supply and demand levels. There are six types of supply and demands, right? I'm noticing there's a trend now, trade order blocks, trade order blocks. Good for you now that your eyes are slowly starting to open, but they don't happen haphazardly or randomly. There are multiple rules. Each order block is different from the other. There's a sequence called areas of values within different types of order blocks. There are different types of supplies and demands. If your guru isn't telling you that, if the PDF you stole that's half reading isn't telling you that, you're still going to bump into the same problems in trading, right? You want to avoid that. Link down below because I teach this stuff, right? I've got a beautiful holistic course around all of this stuff, which was done in my live classes, literally live lectures, you know, you know, almost eight weeks of pure trading material waiting for you at 75% off before the 30th of April. Now, so we've got this quagmire, right? There are more longs than shorts according to the report of the institutions on COT all the way till last week, Tuesday. But this thing has been falling since June. Now, what you now need, and remember, COT is a, is a combination of a lot of things. So on our left side here, we've got, you know, the, 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 the banks. Remember, uh, as 365, you know, it's not just a, a marketing line. We trade like the banks. We literally do. We literally teach you how to do that. 
And a lot of people now think it's cool to say that with no understanding, right? But we literally do that. And so non-commercial positions speak of large market speculators, the banks, for example, but there could be any private institution, including 365, including my flow traders, my personal flow traders, including how we teach retail traders to look. Large, large means big, right? So, so you might have to look into what the large speculators are doing. The difference between non-commercial and commercial is that commercial positions hedge it, companies, they've been invested interest in the underlying asset. So for example, uh, you know, two years ago, one of my corporate clients was actually a farmer and I've told the story many times and he farmed cotton, right? Somewhere here in South Africa. And his job is to be a farmer, but he came to us to hedge him in the cotton market in case his crops don't do well. In case in the Eastern Cape, because when the, I mean, the Eastern Cape is a province in South Africa, there's a lot of drought. He wasn't sure. He wasn't sure how he was gonna, you know, you know how his crop was gonna look in 2020, just before lockdown. And so we hedged him into the market. So the hedges have an invested underlying asset on that particular thing. Whereas large speculators, we, we, we're not that invested in terms of the underlying asset. We just market speculators and we make money purely by being right if we are right about the direction of flow. All right. I hope that makes sense. So what I then do on my CO team, what you should do for those of you who are going to make the unfortunate mistake of not moving forward and joining 365 fully, at least to empower you as you go by, because at least you have at least one of the pieces to the puzzle is you need to have a system on your spreadsheet or you need to have a system when you're looking at COT data to really, really understand what it's trying to communicate to you. Now, long short, right? So I've got the total orders, the buys and things. So, and then I like to look at the net positions, the net positions of exactly what's going on on the speculators end, the large speculators, non-commercial, the net positions of the hedge. I like to see that. Now, one thing that this person who was talking to me on the golf course, and I'm assuming some of you make this mistake, completely forgot about the sentiment indicator that I created. The sentiment indicator is just a big difference between the net positions of the banks and the net positions of the commercials. If the net position, ladies and gentlemen, is negative, then there is still a massive bias to the downside. If the net position is positive, or naturally there is a bias to the upside. It's still not enough information to work on. But I can tell you that as much as Euro USD from as far back as we can trace has always had more longs than shorts, Euro USD has also been extremely consistent in having negative uh, net positions on the table. That means all the orders, when you compile them, balance them, distribute them, fill buy orders and fill in sell orders, all of them, generally speaking, always lean towards having more sell orders on the table. And we can see that on the chart. So while the large speculators and the banks are continuously pushing euro up right to maintain some type of buy bullish ish bullish ish momentum if you look very carefully institutions who are slightly bigger slightly larger on average right the hedging corporations have always had more shots on the table so while they had less longs unlike these guys with more longs the difference in shorts that hedge funds put in outweigh the longs in general. And so your sentiment indicator will tell you that stuff. Will be like, look, man, I can see that these guys are buying, but these guys are also selling. In general, a flow trader will get the instructions that overwhelm the table, where there's the most imbalance. That's where the term imbalance came about. And if the imbalance is to sell, your chart will fall. It doesn't matter what your trading strategy is telling you. If the imbalance, if the sentiment indicator is pushing for more downside, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get more downside. You're going to get many beautiful green days, and those many beautiful green days will lead to many weeks of selling. All right. And that's the balance. Number one. Number two, on my COT report spreadsheet, I have another function that I, I would like to talk to you guys about the 13 average week. Now, I say this and I'm going to repeat it, excuse me. Because we like to trade like the banks and because we do, and it's not a sound bite, I want to bring this to your attention one more time. One more time. And please, please try to remember the practical approach to all of the stuff. Banks think in three months. If you've been to any of my lectures and classes, you'll know where I'm going with this. 
We call this quarters, financial quarters. The rest of the world calls it quarters, but in the finance sector, the, the short-term perspective, right? Because remember, banks are long-term investors, long-term traders. Three months is a perspective lens, financial quarter. You're, you barely ever get day-to-day -day trade in big institutions, right? You, you get shorts, maybe in the stock market world, but, but we're looking at the flow of money that regulates the exchange, forex exchange around geopolitical trading and import and export of products between countries for pricing. It can't randomly fluctuate on a day-to-day, hour-to-hour basis. International trade would be rendered useless and impossible to predict. You would call China, wanna buy, uh, you know, you know, no, you know, I don't know. China would call Africa rather, wanna buy raw materials from Africa, and the price of those raw materials from Africa today would be two million US dollars. But if markets were as random as everyone likes to make them seem to be, right, based on the currency exchange, the yuan versus the czar, the yuan versus the pula, the yuan versus the Kenyan shillings, the yuan versus you know, whatever African country, the next day, if there was no regulatory beat around the central banks of each country through monetary policy regulating the foreign exchange market, the next day China could call Africa and the same raw materials are now 10 million. All right. So it is easy, yeah, with our trading strategy to almost, we like to say nothing in the markets is random. Human beings are random. Trading participants in the markets are random, but markets themselves are not random. And the flow of price can be largely speculated to a very high degree of accuracy. You can't always be right all the time, but you can damn well make sure to be right most of the time. And on the times you're not wrong, we'll talk about risk management in another video. Okay, but, but, but this is it. So. Three months perspective is how our large market speculators are thinking. Most of them generally like to take a one year take profit. If you think I'm lying, go to NASDAQ 100. Look at when COVID happened, March of 2020. After a year, go see what happened in March of 2021. See the uptrend from the value based recovery of March of 2020 and see the drop in March of 2021. Profit taking had happened. Right. So they like to take profit in one year. And generally, because we're talking about physical to monetary, specifically monetary policies, banks generally operate in a 10 year plan. Right. You will see Powell, you'll see Bank of China, Reserve Bank once in a while, referring back to their 10 year framework of excuse me, policy building, right? In capitalism, this falls under a term called neoliberal policies, right? A lot of countries have these, and it's, it's just a document that kind of like guides how the state, government, and the banking system are thinking about each country. Now, if you were to think about it, three months perspective, which is really what I want us to look at right now, is 12 weeks. There are 12 weeks in three months or four weeks in one month. Four times three is 12 weeks. So we get one financial quarter in the finance sector after 12 weeks. We get one financial quarter in the charts. So this is a financial quarter of COT readings, if you'd like, for 2022. We take the four weeks of January right here, right? January, February, and the four weeks of March. That's one financial quarter. If you just were to look at the first financial quarter of this year, and look at COT, you would notice that from January 4th up until March the 29th, there was more long orders in Euro USD, in Euro, in the Euro in general rather, but yet Euro USD just kept falling, right? So, 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 so I'm trying to bring to you that this whole narrative is a little bit incomplete if you look at it that way. So what I like to do, I mean, and, and I just highlighted it here, but you, 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 you look at the whiteboard, I apologize. So what I like to do is I created something called the 13 week moving average. Now I don't use indicators. So everything of mine is done purely from price action from the charts through supply and demand lens. And, and if, if, if I need assistant tools, all of them do not rely on lagging systems. The 13 week, uh, 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 average, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you right now. My COT data is made out of this simple, simple logical point. There are 12 weeks in a financial quarter, so I'm going to add all 12, all 12 orders, all 12 weeks of buys, all 12 weeks of sales, and I'm gonna add an extra week. 
just to see how week 13 rolls in. So is it is it a continuation? Is, is week 13 going to continue what was happening in the talk weeks, et cetera? And then when I have the total of all the longs for the last 13 weeks, if that makes sense now, and I have the total for all the shorts for the last 13 weeks, I simply divide it by 13. I'm trying to get an average, a mean, an average number of orders, which helps me understand that when markets take out a new order above the average is that a dynamic shift in the market. So let me show you what I mean, uh, just to make this a little bit more clearer, because uh, I can imagine if you're confused, it's not your fault, it's probably how I'm explaining it, right? So, 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 so just bear with me. Also remember, tell your mind it's not easy, it's not hard, it's just new. It's just new, it's just a new way of doing things. It's not hard, it's just new. Because every day, anyways, in every way, you, sir, you, ma'am, are getting better and better. So, 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 so if, if it doesn't click today, it's okay because you don't have to shut down. Your trading career is not over. You, you blew an account today, it's okay. Every day, in every way, you're getting better and better. Now, now this is what I mean. So let's look at, so first of all, you take the most recent COT region. So the most recent right now is the 12th of April. So you put it in there. So these are your longs. Let's just quickly scroll up so we can see the, 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 the. there we go. So th these are the longs that the, 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 the commercials reported in and these are the shorts. And then what you simply do is you want to put all these longs together, uh, add them for the last 13. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So now you've got 13 weeks of data. You now know exactly what, how smart you want to see. If this guy's been building a long narrative, a short narrative. Right, and, and here's a quick hack. I'm sure you guys know how to use Excel, but if you just click here, it'll just give you everything. It'll tell you that, look, man, you've got 13 issues thing. On total, this is how much all these orders are. So on total, it's 2,802, you know, uh, uh, long bias orders. And I care about the average. The average is... Uh, on, on average, after 13 weeks on average, the longs are 215,592. And that's the little formula plucked in here at the top, right? So you want a system like that. So now I know this is going to change next week. So next week, Tuesday, or this Friday, or for this past week, rather Tuesday, when there's a new number of orders, I know my average is going to change. And I'm going to have to input it to calculate it but this is what i'm doing with this information then i look at the latest cot data the latest one says they they got 221,645 longs and i'm comparing it with the average with the average that's the 13 week average on average generally speaking they normally have 215,000 longs which means this past week tuesday the 12th of april there were more longs than average more longs than average this week this past week there were more longs on average cot came out on the 12th so listen now when markets were falling here and we'll break down the structure properly at some point in time those of you who know how i trade you know that markets arrive in a demand which i identified for you inside one of my war rooms and i told you i'm not going to take a trade there because i'm very bearish on euro usd but if we look very carefully on the chart this last red candle here before the green candle ladies and gentlemen the last red candle is the top that's when they decided to add more longs on the 12th of april above normal average right so about maybe ten thousand ish more buy orders right you can see there was 54.8 percent more longs than sells that particular week and you can see the next day on the charts markets agreed like they were like yeah there's a buy boost they bought 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 believe you me retail traders bought 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 and then they sold against them breaking this demand and you'll hear me talk about this demand being broken the sunday before it even happened right how is this demand broken once price a candlestick a week goes beyond my carefully drawn areas of value that are carefully drawn an order block or, or a PCP, potential continuation pattern, which is one of the variables in supply and demand, I know never to buy in that zone again. And then because there were more longs above average that particular week of the 12th, you can see it took about two or three days later and markets started to buy back up, buy back the bottom. So that's what's 
happening right now. And that's why we have a green, greenish week, so to speak, in the in the risk on equity, risk on you know, you know, assets like Euro USD. The shorts, however, there was a hundred and eighty-two uh, 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 shorts in the market. Uh, the, the, that came in 182,585. And if you look very carefully, this is also above average uh, um, 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 selling pressure in price. So now I've got extra selling pressure than above average, slightly more buying pressure than above average in the chart. Uh, and this is just, uh, remember the total, normally there's about, you know, 30 something, 39, 393, sorry, something thousand orders. This week, there was a little bit above more buy and sell orders on the table because column is the total. And then we've got the, the, the basic percentages and, and half of that. So this, this is kind of like I'm building a narrative with COT. So now I know I've got slightly a bit more buys than usual, but definitely way more sell. I mean, 182 jump from to 178,000 jump, right, than usual, right? So the selling pressure somewhere is building up, but that's not enough. What then I need to look at then is the sentiment difference. And my sentiment indicator is despite them going above, above average in the longs on the table, they are still, they are still negative. There are still more sell side orders in general on the table, number one. Number two, even the average 13 week average uh, sentiment indicators telling us that on average, we generally expect negative, uh, I think that's 27,000. We generally expect negative 27,000 uh, are sell orders and we're slightly below, but everything is still negative, right? So when I come back to the charts, I'm happy for intraday traders to buy and make money. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm a swing trader, right? But even as an intraday trader or short-term swing trader, you want to start understanding what's going on. The buying here might not be trading buying for you. The buying here might be banks preparing the way for something. Because this chart is so skewed to the downside, thanks to understanding COT correctly, thanks to looking at something as simple as the trend, right? I have no choice but to assume a good position to start to look for sell. When I wanna sell, I wanna sell away from demand number one. When I wanna sell, I wanna sell when a demand has been taken out. That's been done number two. When I wanna sell, I wanna look at the previous recent leg in the chart to see exactly what on earth was going on. Am I crazy to sell? Will I be selling by myself? Are institutions likely to sell with me? And then when all these things are clear, I want to make sure that all my rules for a specific supply, there's a module to supply, bridging off in pattern, which is its own imbalance rule. I want to make sure that the area of value that I'm dealing with is fresh, or at least has had a retest, right? I'm not, a, I don't want to trade like retail traders. Retail traders love to trade at market memory. They love to see a support or resistance get hit many times, and they've been taught to believe that because it's been hit many times, it's strong, it's firm, price will definitely bounce from there. I know that's how you're going to get you know, you know, liquidified most of the time. So then I start to assess this actually might be a very good place to sell again. I know that according to Euro USD, most of the time when the buys are more than the shorts, which has been its history, you just get a whole lot of buying, buying, buying before a whole lot of real selling. And I don't know when this buy trend could stop. Now, the other thing to look at is just to actually look at what happened the leg before, before I wrap up this video. You will see that Euro USD for a while had dropped and then arrived in a demand. And I'm talking all the way back on the 7th of March, 2022. And then markets read it back into a supply. This is not kind of like the video to teach you how to identify supplies and demands. Um, I, I mean, I've, I've got like hundred, you know, a proper lecture series around this in my course. You know, so 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 that would make my videos extremely long. I know a lot of people love short videos, straight to the point, concise, and that's good. But never take that type of content or rush for 20-minute baked noodle information at the expense of your account. You're going to have to be dedicated enough to put in the time sometimes to finish a long video to get everything that will benefit you. You know, it's up to you, you know, but it's your time. 
you know, but, but, but I do believe that, you know, rushing for quick fix based things is how you quickly lose money, right? So it, I, I found this interesting, right? If, if Euro is, it's now time to go long. And remember, by the way, our big analysis was Euro USD arrived at a monthly supply, monthly supply number one, which was this bullish in golf in Canada. Look how deep we now in so. And I told you guys, those of you who've been following me for a very long time, I told you guys that, look, man, this is only B. We are coming from A. And if we're at B, but markets want to go to C, the quickest way is to go through. I, I, I repeat this many times. I say we are going to remove this demand. I guarantee you, buy low, sell high, no matter what, no, no matter your market logic, no matter your goal, we are going to remove it. And we're starting to see that you never, ever take a trade like this. Please, it's five students. We know for a fact that the order flows, the buy orders inside the zone are now so weak. I mean, markets have deeply penetrated the zone to the lowest and last daily demand inside the zone. And even that one is now broken. So yes, there's upticks, there's some buying, buying, buying pressure right now. But, 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 but And that's for the no vice trader, right? They're going to get a lot of retail traders trapped into that buy momentum. And we better be on the right side of price. Not trading advice, not finance advice, but I'm definitely looking forward to selling against a lot of these people. But here are the clues. Markets bounced off this demand. If this demand, which by the way was inside a governing demand, a monthly demand, and then we should have had you know, a, a, an upward streak. But because price failed, right, it was stopped by another daily demand. You get one, two touches, and then markets created a demand right there. All right, another demand. It's just stopped by a daily supply, sorry. And then it created another demand, right? Let me just put a, a make this arrow white because I know there are a lot of, I don't, want, I don't want you to be confused. See by that white arrow right there, there was another demand that was created. So, 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 so we're looking in hindsight and also you're looking for these things in the future. When markets create a demand and those of you rush to buy, you're clearly not paying attention to the war rooms because we agreed we're not going to do such. We're not going to do anything that crazy, right? You know? Market then ran it into a daily supply and broke that. Didn't test it. Didn't they just broke it? So that for me is confirmation number one. You're not taking out supplies. You're breaking demands. You're not making room to go up. You're making room to go down. COT has been deeply analyzed. We now understand where the most orders fall. We're now looking at the structure, and the structure is saying, "Look, man, you go to a PCP supply. It held." PCPs, guys, depending on how they are formulated, depending on who's teaching you supply and demand, this is a very specific type of supply and demand. It's not just an order block. It has clean rules when it comes to areas of value. And one of the rules are this should not hold. After one, two touches, this should have rocked all the way up if markets wanted to remove it. In fact, on this cell here, I, that's why I'm not in Euro USD. Because I follow the rules. The rules were, hell no, you can't sell there again. That's why I'm not in it. Even though it worked, I could not have risked capital to sell again because this is not the type of order block that can sustain several amounts of hits. There are specific types of supplies and demands that can. This is not one of them. And because this is one of those areas that should not have handled the third touch and still fell, I let it go. But the third touch was so powerful, it created a new supply bridging off in pattern, which is now there in front of us, which if I'd been paying attention to the chart, I probably would have waited for a retest, which we never even got anyways. But what's interesting is it took out demand, this white demand here, as price fell back to the daily demand, closing below right the last time markets arrived here in fact closing all the way to take out the second demand that to me again bruise of very much strong sell pressure this ladies and gentlemen is what i tried to sum up in an amazing game of golf about 48 hours ago and i really hope this video helped you please these are all the videos i want to make for you in the next video, I'm going to be covering something that's quite exciting, uh, an investing idea that I'm going, to, I'm going to make public on YouTube, a specific crypto token I'm going to buy. I'm going to explain why I'm going to buy it. It's kind of like linked to the Elon Musk Twitter debate, so please don't miss that video. But I'll be teaching you guys how do we generate good stock 
invest in crypto, invest, even how do you generate a good trade idea? The media is saying this, they're pushing this into your face. There's a narrative, go buy here or go sell this. And you always get brands. And I want to show you how we use smart money concepts to help us really think through what the top 10% are doing. If you like this video and you watch till the end, shake my hand one more time, you know, stay blessed and I'll see you in the next one. Uh, uh, please don't forget, make use of the links down below. There is a lot of stuff that we deal with in the Trading Course Academy. Module one, the mastering the basics, about 20 something, two hour lectures on the different types of supply and demand, all the rules. Module two, my trader's edge. Module three, specifically catered for micro trading, day trading, understanding the, all the different types of things that happen on the much more lower time frames to purify your risk to reward ratio, that's number one but also to sharpen your, your, your income skills so you can actually start to accumulate and grow your capital. Module four is the best thing I have ever put together, right? Trading psychology, which is where I think most traders should start. Trading psychology should always have been the, you know, the, one of the first things I did, but because of time, you know, over the years, I'm finally ready to teach it, right? I only teach something that I'm finally comfortable and competent in doing, right? And, and I believe I've, I've reached a point of, of master competence. And so now I can finally share it, right? So 365, one more time, shake my hand and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.